Okay, so you have your fun money left first. That picture has to do with what we're going to be talking about. Well, this penguin, or the, the penguin that the emperor penguin, loves to sing. In fact, they're some of the most musical species on earth. And although they don't live anywhere near where we are, unless we see them in zoos, but when courting, the male and the female will bow to each other and they'll sing to each other. The, the female voice is soft and gentle, the male voice is louder and long, and when the mother penguin has laid her eggs, she goes out to the ocean for a long, long time getting food, and while she's gone, the father sits on the eggs and sings and drops. So even from their, uh, while they're still the egg, the baby chicks are hearing their parents sing. And after regaining her strength, the female comes back to the family and to the nest, and she then sings as well. And certainly, before the little one is hatched, if you lean really close to the egg, you can hear the chick inside singing back as well. And then there's another picture here, it's so cute after they hatch a little bit. And so just like the penguin can sing, and then pray to God, the people of God are also consuming. When Moses led the Jews out of Egypt, he paused and prayed to God in song, that we found in Exodus 15. When Deborah, on the judgment saying in victory, in Judges 5, David's song, he wrote many, many of them, many of which are in the book of Psalms. And, and in the upper room, when Jesus and his disciples were to have the Last Supper, they sang a song as well. And Paul instructed people to sing in Ephesians 5, 19, as well as Colossians 3, 16. So that raises the question, are we singing Christmas? Maybe sometimes we don't like to sing as much as people, but while we're by ourselves at home, hopefully we're singing when we, we think of what great things God has done for us. Are we expressing the joy of the Lord in song? It might not always be on our lips, but hopefully the joy of the Lord at least is in our heart. And if you have no one at all, something might be wrong. But so maybe run to God for help and ask Him to help us in what we're dealing with, to give us a song. He wants us to have a song that will praise and love the Lord. And then uh, there's three categories in music. But as music has a vital part of the worship of God, oftentimes we have music at church, or maybe sometimes people can use music in their devotions. Time of God, one on one, back to house. Because God has created music, and music is one of the ways that God is praised or honored. The Bible tells us in Job 38 7 that during the first six days of creation, the angels, or something called the morning stars in the earth, the angels sang together. Music is often then used in the Bible, and you would say as well, of time of worshiping God. First Chronicles 23 5. Tells us that King David, when he was in Israel, he had 4,000 musicians to be assigned to sing and praise God in the temple. That's a lot of people all together singing and praising God. And today, we still sing as part of our work. Because God knows that music is a great way to keep some God and to give a response to praise to Him. In your Bible, I read your turn to Ephesians 5 19. Ephesians 5 19. Ephesians is the tenth book in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and one of the others, Galatians, and then Ephesians. As I tell my students in my class, once you find the book of Ephesians, look for a big five, that's chapter five, and look for a little nineteen, that's verse nineteen. So Ephesians, big five, little nineteen. <laughs> God tells us to worship God with music and to sing with music to each other as well. This is why we sing at music, and what, uh, we sing music at church, and we sing at chapel, and also various times throughout our house. So Ephesians 5.19 says, Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. So there's three categories of music that we use in praise to God, song. Those are five words to set to music. There is a longer, more technical list of what qualifies as a musical song, but just to sum it up, the easiest way to describe it is five words to set to music. Um, like an example, Psalm 56.3, 
you might have heard this one in our classroom. Uh, if you're in the Wisconsin class, one of those other classes right next to first grade, when we sing is uh, What time am I afraid of trust in thee? What time am I afraid of trust in thee? What time am I afraid of trust in thee? Psalm 56 3. I do trust God. So, Psalms is one category of music we have in praising God. Another one is hymns. Hymns are strong music with words that tell about how great our God is. Uh, Reverend John Frazier, he described hymns as, quote, preach the word of God and bring it near to the hearts of the people, end quote. And some examples of hymns, I'll play some examples here real quick, that you maybe have heard, are the, the doxology and holy, 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 other examples of them. God also works 
And then they're going to sing the third verse and the third verse a little bit. And the third verse, the way I felt, even though the wrong may seem really strong around us, God is the ruler, yes, he will still have the ultimate faith. Uh, but this time, the first grade will come on up, and they'll say, this is my father's world, and they're going to play Jesus loves me, I'm talking. Oh, okay.
So, the whole, I don't know if I'd like to do some of you, but Jesus loves us when we're doing it right, and when we're not doing it right. But may we be doing our part to follow God and to live for Him. And we're going to look at, real briefly here, the life of the godly man who wrote the music to Jesus loves us. We will examine how he impacted many people in his day, and his impact continues even today through the song that he wrote to me for Jesus loves me. Sometimes people ask the question, or they discuss, about whether or not people are an island unto themselves, meaning that we don't affect others, but no, we do affect other people around us. Each life can make a lasting impact. So each of us can impact others here at school and elsewhere. The question then is, are we making a positive impact on others or a negative impact on others? Many people have passed been honored for various things, whether it's George Washington for helping with the beginning of our country, or Isaac Newton and his work with science, or many others. But with William Bat Elsler Bradley, which is a really odd name, but his life and accomplishments can be really intriguing to study. Bradbury impacted others with his passion for children first and for God. He was born October 6, 1816. In York, Maine. He was blessed that both of his parents were musical, and he inherited the musical gift from both of them. But strangely enough, he didn't even start to really do much with music, studying music, or doing much anything with music until he was 17 years old. After his family moved to Boston, he studied music under Lowell Mason, who Lowell Mason in the early parts of our country was very influential and helping people across America learn how to sing and sing well. As a side note, Lowell Mason wrote many church songs, including Nearer My God to Thee, and he wrote music for a song. I'm going to play a little sample of it here. Uh, see if you might be able to figure out what song he wrote. Another song. Started teaching children, and he asked the 
who loved to keep his children, and he learned to. Uh, he had a new adventure with his walk with God. And in 1841, he started teaching his children. He gave them free music classes, and he started putting together music festivals. And he started writing songs for his kids to sing in Sunday school. Many of those songs, like Jesus Loves Me, he still knows today. The children were often excited during the time of singing with him, and he often had to write brand new songs just for them to sing. He published these in the different books. He also helped uh, YMCA, so you probably heard of YMCA. He helped make their first music book back in 1867. He helped put that together. <laughs> and he made all kinds of Sunday school and junior church songs. Uh, George Seven referred to Billy Bradbury as, quote, being one of the first to compose Sunday school songs, unquote. Bradbury's philosophy was portrayed in his composing of music for children's songs that children would love and be able to easily learn. That was his desire. Songs they would love, easily learn, and teach them about God. And he wanted to help them learn more truths in their walk with God. He continued to make an impact with children because of his love for God. And he loved teaching these children and succeeded in writing lots and lots of songs for them. Some of his musical festivals he did were called juvenile musical festivals. At some of them, you have a thousand kids there, all singing together, different songs to do next for them. And they loved singing their songs, they loved being with him, and they knew he loved them, because God loved him. And um, Colossians 323, we can see that Bradbury was a hard worker. Colossians 323 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not the human master. Colossians 3, 23. So whatever we're called to do, if it's writing our paragraph for our teachers, if you're in elementary school, or an older school student, but you have longer papers you have to write other assignments, maybe do it with our might, as a the Lord. Or when you go home and your mom or dad asks you to help throw away the trash and help set the table, maybe do that with our might as well. Not only was Bradbury passionate about working with the children, he was passionate in his relationship with God. Bradbury had a passion to love and to know God. Richard Adams, in one of his articles he wrote about Bill Bradbury, he wrote about uh, Mr. Bradbury had warehouses he would work at. Sometimes, if he did the work and he ran out of time beforehand to have his devotions for time with God at home, when he'd get to his warehouse, he'd find out he had a little office he'd made, and he'd go back there to quote, renew his strength and mount up his wings to eagle, end quote. Bradbury made sure he reserved some time every day for worshiping God. And he did not want to neglect the time of God. And he would say, may we be faithful in our time of God. Sometimes, maybe we wake up long after the alarm, or we have to rush out the door, we don't get a chance to do what we intended. But sometimes I'll say, maybe, maybe we take some time to worship with God. And uh, William Bradbury had a big heart and care for people. There's one story of a young man came up to Mr. Bradbury and said, Can you owe me five dollars? And William Bradbury did give the five dollars, but he wrote a little check for twenty-five dollars and handed it to the man with a note saying, I cannot spare you five dollars at the moment, but I'll give you the twenty-five dollars. And then maybe later on, when I can have five dollars, I'll give you that. It was his way of showing kindness to him and giving extra more than the, the young man had asked. With a deep relationship with God and a care for people, it is no wonder William Bradbury was able to do so much with working with children. As for teachers, it's said that just like with Mr. Bradbury, the importance of being loving, forgiving, and generous, and even more so as he worked with kids. Bradbury's impact with Christian music was far reaching and still impacts people today. His music is often had sung in different churches. Some of which are, he leadeth me, oh blessed God, or some of them as I am with a bunty. That one was used as uh, uh, Daniel's Billy Graham, a lot of people they say, or be a bread, be a bread. Jesus loves me, like we heard earlier. And a lot of many other songs he wrote, some of which are not so well known anymore. But Willard Bradbury impacted many of the contemporaries, or people that lived around the same time as him, one of which was Fanny Crosby. 
may refer to her, the blind lady who wrote thousands and thousands of poems and songs. It was Mr. Bradbury who told her one day he had a poem he had in his mind and he didn't know how to write it out necessarily, so he asked her to write the poem. And that was the first poem that she wrote for Sunday school song. She later then went on to write many, many more. So Willie Bradbury was influential in getting Fanny Crosby to write songs for church as well. Shortly before dying, Bradbury said, I long to be free from this evil body, which does so much to bring me down. I feel that I want to be right, that I want to love my Savior, and to act and please him, but this busy brain and hasty nature leave me oftentimes to things that are contrary to the real feelings of my heart. But due to his great walk with God, and he had asked Jesus years before to forgive him of his sins, he realized he could not work his way to heaven. Bradbury was ready then to die. Just days before he died, he said, quote, My soul is a gain of victory. I am happy now. I rest completely upon Christ. May God give me the grace to die. I'm going to see his mother. End quote. On January 7, 1868, when he was 51 years old, he breathed his last breath on this earth and his first breath in heaven. At his burial, his body was laid next to his mother. Bradbury impacted many people with his passion and children's work and his service to God. He had some embarrassing hard times in the beginning, like no one brought up his music class or the organ not working, but he learned humility and was therefore able to be used by God to impact others for evil. Through his work with children, Many songs were written for us today, including Jesus Loves Me. And he died at 51 years old, and his music lives on today. And his impact was children's songs from the Trinity Church, the Sunday School, and other songs. But may we remember, people do not live as an island unto themselves. We all are impacting somebody. May we are impacting for good once we get out. We are not promised tomorrow, but God gives us grace for today. So may we today, this day, choose to use that today to praise God and to serve God. <coughs> At this time, in the Truth Seed class, the second grade, we're going to be coming to say, This is the day. May we remember to use this day as a day to praise God. Sure, y'all know it, so I'll just going to clean it by myself. And then the next one, and after we're done with the first one, we all have to go Okay? So we do this every morning, don't we? Yeah. So we do our way to get ready for our day. So we start with first day, first day, first day, first day, first day, that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. He will rejoice, he will rejoice, and be glad, and be glad. 